Welcome. We are now ready to learn how to find the minimum sample size necessary if we are wanting to estimate an unknown population proportion. So we're going to just make a note here that remember, we did learn how to find minimum sample size previously, but that was when we were estimating a population mean. So this was the formula used for finding sample size for estimating that parameter, the mean. So we need to be careful when we read a question to ask ourselves, what is it we're estimating? So when we're estimating a proportion, the formula for n will be different. So we'll step through this formula by taking a look at the example. So suppose that radio station WKRP desires to estimate the current proportion of the market that they hold. So it'll be clear what you're interested in studying means or proportion. So in this case, proportion. A previous study revealed that WKRP held 15.5% of the market. All right, so somebody else had done a study and that was what they got for their proportion. How many radio listeners must WKRP include in their survey if they would like to be 95% confident that their estimate is within 4% of the true proportion of radio listeners who listen to their station. All right, let me start with the margin of error. So they'd like to be accurate to within 4%. So that word within is a good way to remember how to find your margin of error. So 4%, and then we'll write that in decimal for substituting in our formula coming up. And then 95% confident. So as with the formula previously, we're going to need our critical value Z alpha over two. And for a 95% confidence interval, that Z score is 1.96. We learned several ways to find that value. And now in the formula, we need a P hat and a Q hat. So let me just start with P hat. So P hat would be the sample proportion. But remember, we haven't done a study yet. So we're trying to find sample size to estimate the proportion. So our sample proportion is unknown to us at this point. So one option is to use a value from a previous study as sort of a jumping off point when we fill in our own values in finding our sample size. So if a value is given from another study, that's what we'll put in for our p hat. So it's kind of just piggybacking off of another study to get us started in our formula. So the previous study said they held 15.5% of the market. So let me write that in decimal here, 0 0.155. So that's the 15.5%. So Q hat will be the complement of P hat. So in other words, the sample proportion who do not listen to WKRP. So similarly to P and Q from previously in another chapter, now we just have a P hat and a Q hat. So our Q hat is one minus our P hat. So one minus 0.155, and that will be 0.845. So from the previous study, 15.5% listened to WKRP, which means that the other 84.5% do not. So we'll use those values for our P hat and Q hat. So here is our formula. So when we're estimating a proportion, N is P hat times Q hat, and then in parentheses, our Z score, our critical value, that gets divided by our margin of error, and that part gets squared. So note here that there is no sigma. So here was the formula previously, there was a sigma there, but we're dealing with estimating proportions, so it's a different formula. And then we're ready to substitute. So I'm going to write this horizontally like I type it on my calculator, so 0.155 times 
Then I'll open a parenthesis, 1.96, divide by margin of error, close parenthesis and square. All right, let's see what we get. Oops. So just be careful with your entry. I already saw, I almost made a typo there. All right. And generally you will not get a whole number. So I'm going to write down this whole answer that I'm seeing on my calculator. 314.470975. So as with our previous formula, if we get a value for n that's not a whole number, so remember this would be the minimum value. So we don't do normal rounding here. When we're looking for n, the rule is you always have to go higher, you always go up, and we need a whole number, and so we would go up to 315. Okay, so I can now tell you WKRP is going to need to sample at least 315 radio listeners if they would like to estimate the true proportion rather than mean now, we're doing proportions, and true over there. True is another way of saying population. So we could also we could actually say both if we wanted to, the true population proportion of the market that they hold. So they need at least 315 radio listeners more would be great. This is bare minimum, but that's how many they're going to need if they would like to be 95% confident when they're done and they want their estimate to be accurate to within 4% of that true proportion. All right, so the question then is, what happens if we don't have a prior study, a previous study available to us? So in our formula, we do need a P hat and a Q hat. So if we don't have anybody else's, <clears throat> excuse me, if we don't have another study here to sort of get us started in our calculation, then what we do is we use for our P hat and Q hat, basically a 50-50 split. So since we have no idea what proportion listened to the station, then we basically assume that 50% do and 50% don't. So up here, if no proportion is available, we're gonna let our P hat and our Q hat be 0.5.5. So 50%, 50%. It says it's the most conservative choice because by using those values for P hat and Q hat, it's going to give us the largest possible N. So when we had a previous study to help us get started, we needed 315 listeners. So basically, if we don't have information about this prior study to help us get started, our answer here for N will be larger. So we're going to need more data if we don't have that previous study to help us get started. All right, so if no estimate is available, we're gonna assume the P hat, Q hat values that we use will be 0.5.5. And then the formula remains the same. I'm writing it again. The more you get used to writing things, the easier questions become. So P hat, Q hat, Z alpha over two over margin of error squared. And then we just substitute. And again, I'm just writing this horizontally across the page. As I enter it on my calculator. And we should now see that we're going to need to collect more data than if we had known a previous studies estimate. All right, so now I'm up to a value 600.25. So again, we do need to go up. So we would go up to now 601. All right, so if no prior estimate for our proportion of the market held was available, now they would need to sample at least 601 radio listeners if they would like to keep 
their same level of competence and accuracy. All right, so let's try one more. Oh, I'm sorry, before I scroll forward here, I'm just going to label these values in a different color. So when we had our prior estimate, it was P hat, Q hat, where Q hat is the complement of P hat. And then if no prior estimate is available for P hat and Q hat, you wanna do 0 0.5. And always be careful with your decimal values because with percents around like the margin of error, you are gonna be switching things to decimal and you wanna make sure not to make any little mistakes there. All right, one more here. All right, suppose that a mobile phone company wants to determine the current percentage of customers aged 60 plus who use text messaging on their cell phones. A prior study indicated that the proportion was 45%. How many customers age 60 plus must the company survey in order to be 90% confident that their sample estimate of the proportion will be within 3.5 percentage points of the true population proportion? All right, so our given values here. So we do have a prior study. So we're gonna use their value as our estimate for P hat. So 45%, so 0.45 in decimal. So let's go ahead and write our Q hat, complement of P hat. So one minus our P hat, that will be 0.55. All right, so the estimate here is 45% do use texts on their phones. The other, that would be 55% don't. And then 90% confident. So the critical value Z alpha over two. So when we find N, we're always going to be doing two decimal places for our critical values. So the three decimal places here, 1.645, um, will lead us to a different value for N. So when we're looking for N, we're going to, we're going to stick with two decimal places in our calculations, so 1.65. And then our margin of error, there's the word within again. So within 3.5 percentage points, so within 3.5%, which in decimal there is 0 0.035. All right, so one more time, formula for sample size when you're trying to estimate a proportion. So P hat, Q hat. C alpha over two over margin of error squared. All right, so 0 0.45 times 0 0.55, open parenthesis 1.65, divide by margin of error, close parenthesis and square. All right, so let's see where we are for this study. And I'm going to just again, write down everything I'm seeing on my screen over there. You can skip writing this part if you would like. Again, just getting it in the notes. So I know that I go up to the next whole number would be 551. All right, so now I know that I'm going to need to sample, we need to sample at least 551 customers. So this company wants to estimate the percentage of customers who use text messaging on their phone, and in particular customers that are aged 60 plus. So they're gonna have to survey or sample 551 customers aged, put the word aged there, aged, age 60 plus, if they wanna estimate the true. Now, when I read the question here, it didn't say proportion, it said percentage, but proportions can be written as percentages. So a percentage is an example of a proportion. So you can say proportion or percentage, either one is totally fine. So since the question said percentage, I'll say percentage. 
So if they'd like to estimate the true percentage or true proportion of all customers, so again, we're trying to take a sample to estimate what's true for all their customers, and 60 plus who use text messaging, if they would like to be 90% confident and accurate to within 3.5%. All right, so there is your formula for finding N when you're wanting to estimate a proportion.